Good morning and welcome to Kingdom at Home. We have missed you. We know you've missed us too, but I have great news. Our media department has done upgrades and we are now going to be live with you every Sunday morning at 8.30. Find us on YouTube at KWCI242 or on Facebook, Kingdom Worship Center International. But if you want that in-sanctuary experience, we are going to be at home at 3B East Atlantic Drive, 7.30 a.m. All safety protocols will be observed. So stay tuned. So get ready to be empowered, encouraged, and energized to take on the week. After the message, we've got announcements, so don't leave just yet. Well, surely this is indeed the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I am just so delighted to be coming to you again from our site, our home. I, it's just a blessing. You know, we've been having a lot of texts and calls from others who have been saying, you know, um, we miss you online. And so it is our it was our intent to come back to you. However, we had to ensure that um, some things were in place to give you the product we believe you deserve. And so we're back, and so we're going to be coming to you um, every Sunday morning. For those of you who are in Tennessee and Canada and the parts of the United States and the Bahamas at large, so you will be having kingdom experience and so i just delighted to be back but we thank god for what he is doing in our midst and i want you to continue to pray and believe god that he will give us victory over this COVID pandemic could be going to the lord with a word of prayer father we are just so delighted that we can come into your presence for in your presence there is fullness of joy at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore Enlarge our territories, expand our borders, bring us, God, to a place that we can understand the mysteries and the joys of your truth and make us what you want us to be today. As we now go into the entrance of this word, may it indeed bring life, health, and wholeness to the hearer. May you be edified, glorified in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Today I want to talk to you um, from a passage of scripture that is very familiar to us. Nonetheless, I believe it's very powerful. I believe that God wants to say something to us that will enlarge us as his servants and bring us to a place of victory and fulfillment. I want to talk to you from this subject, understanding God and how he operates understanding God and how he operates. Now, I know that God is, is so vast that to say to understand God is really almost uh, a misnomer, to believe that we can truly understand God. But I do believe that God operates in a way in the life of his children that can be understandable to us. And that is the premise on which I stand today. How do we understand God in the foundational understanding of how he operates in the life of his saints? The book of Joshua, chapter 7, gives us a story that I believe is very critical to what I want to declare today. And this is what it says in the book of, of Judges, verse, chapter 7, Judges 7, and I want to look at verse 2 through verse 7. And it says, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves saying against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead, and there they return to them to the people 
20 and 2,000, and there remained 10,000. I want to stop there for a moment. What just happened? There was an army that had encamped against the people of God. The Midianites had encamped against God's people. They had rallied and arrayed a great army that almost was like grasshoppers on the earth. They said in, in, in a further scripture, like the sand on the shore. It was a multitude of people that had now arrayed themselves to go against God's people. Gideon had now gained an army of some 32,000 and they were excited about this war. This Because you know Gideon was a military man. But God came to him and said, listen, it's too much people to fight for me to give you the Midianites. I need you to go and ask those who are afraid to fight to please go back home. Well, the scripture says, that when he spoke into their ears, if you're scared, please go home. Because this fight ain't for scary folks. And we are told in scripture that 22,000 returned early in the morning from Mount Gilead. Now that was shocking because I never in a million years would have thought 22,000 would have gone. I said, yes, probably a thousand, probably a few hundred, but never 22,000. It looked like the army of Gideon was now at a deficit, that the army of Gideon was now at a disadvantage. But as we read the story, we find that God went down a little further. And he says to them, as we read the scripture, he says, now listen, I need you to take them to the water because they're still too big. Come on now. We have 32,000. We are now down to 10,000. And God is saying it's still too big. And one of the reasons God said it, he said, I need to fix this in such a way that you will know like you know it is the doing of the Lord. See, it's easy for us to believe that God isn't in our victories. Our flesh and our ego gets the best of us. And many instances, we feel that we did the thing by ourselves. But friends, let me let you know that even though God is not seen, he is behind the scene making things work for your good, for my good. It is God behind the scene doing the miracle for us. And so the Bible says that when they went to the water, God gave them instructions. And he said, listen, those who go on their knees and those who drink other than um, out of their hands, those who are not vigilant when they drink, he says, send them home. We'll be discovered that another 9,700 went back home. It only left 300 from 32,000 to 300. Friends, that's, isn't that something? That sounds like God. God works in the impossible. When God wants to do something miraculous in our lives, he moves any idea, any inclination where you and I could believe that it is us. God will let you go to a bank where you cannot qualify and get the loan. God will cause you to get a promotion that you are not qualified for. God will let you go to a school that there was no way you could have um, meet the tuitions or the cost to get to. God will do things in ways that stounds you so that you can know that it is the doing of the Lord. It is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides, who is working behind the scenes for you and I. We must understand the goodness of God. We must understand that God is faithful to his promise. That God is not a man that he should lie. If God said it, he will make it good. That the God we serve is able to do exceeding abundantly above. You're saying, Bishop Sanders, why you keep saying that? Because in this time, we need to keep our focus on the fact that it is the Lord who does it and he does it well. Yes, friends, God does it 
Well, I'm so delighted because I'm learning now that my hope and my trust must be in God. My hope and confidence must be in the God who's able to do exceeding abundantly above. As I read this, he said this. He said, whoever is fearful and afraid, you can't fight in this army. Now, I know some of you out there don't catch this. I um, take no feelings to this, but I'm telling you, the Bible says fear carries torment. If you're out there and you're struggling with fear, I'm letting you know today, according to the word of God, the Bible said he has not given us the spirit of fear. Stop finding fault for why you're afraid. God hasn't given it to you. If you want to keep the fair, then you are keeping something that is going to be destructive to your spiritual advancement. God wants you to be liberated by his power. He wants you to be courageous. Throughout the scriptures, we hear God saying, take courage, be strong. These are the instructions that God has given to his children. Not fear. He said, be not afraid. Why did you fail? Why? Because fear carries torment. Fear is to the enemy what faith is to God. I oftentimes use this terminology that fear is negative faith. Fear is designed to cripple you, to incapacitate you, to stifle you from your advancement. Fear is necessary when the enemy wants to move in your life. And so you got to know how to arrest fear by the power of God and understand through the word of God, he has not given you the spirit of fear. So how does God operate? God operates in a way that convinces you and I that it is him working for us. Friends, God wants you to know so bad. He is eager for you to learn that he cares for you. He wants you to know through everything that goes on in your life, that the victory that comes through your life, that he is behind the scene working on your behalf. I want you to know it wasn't you. It wasn't you. When he spoke to Zerubbabel, he said this, he said, it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit. He said, it ain't by human might. It's not by might nor by power, not by your influence, not by your military background. He said, it's by my spirit. In other words, the accomplishments you got is because God was behind the scene saying, make it happen. Because God was behind the scene like the master chess player moving the cards before, moving the chess game before you even knew. It was God behind the scene working it out for you and I. And so I want you to take courage today that the God of heaven still loves you. The God of heaven cares about you. The God of heaven sees what you're going through, but he needs you to trust him where you can't trace him. When things are difficult to understand, he wants you to trust him. He needs us to trust him. God has a way of using circumstances and situation to perfect our lives and bring us to a place of maturation so that we will be greater for his kingdom. I believe that. And so God wanted Gideon to understand, listen, I'm going to give you the victory, but I need you to be confident in this very thing. That he who keeps Israel doesn't slumber nor he sleep. God wanted them to understand that he is a way-making God. And so God takes difficult situation. He comes and he marries it. He puts you in the situation, knowing the outcome before you even get in it. And then he lets the process perfect you and prepare you. But God doesn't know you are going to be a victor in it. So when you come out, you come out better. Why? Because you have gone through it and you went through it with God. Now, I know it didn't look like it. It didn't look like it for Joseph when he walked through from the pit 
to the palace. He didn't understand every process was necessary. He didn't understand that the process was making him to be the king and the, the prime minister that he was called to be. But God will allow situations and circumstances to make us what he wants us to be. You have this confidence. You have everything in you to become the victor that you need to be. I want to encourage you today that there is a way that God operates. And sometimes the way God operates does not make sense to our psyche. It doesn't make sense to how we think. And so sometimes he got to break us to bless us. He has to take us through rough times, not that he, 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 he permits it or he, he purposes it, but he, he allows it and he causes the fragrance of our life to come up to heaven as a sweet smelling savor. God is in your affairs. Can I let you in on that secret? God is working behind the scenes for you. Daughter of God, God knows what you've been through and he knows it was tough and he knows it was hard. And I'm here to tell you, God is going to bring you through better than you've been. But he says to you, take courage. Don't allow fear to hold you hostage and hold you back. Remember the word of God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Know what the word says. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. It says I'm the head and not the tail above only and not beneath. Allow those words to resonate in your heart. To mushroom and grow. And believe every word that the Bible says concerning you. That the weapons of your warfare are not carnal but mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. You can pull them down. The devil will speak into your hearing and say to you, child of God, you, that ain't happening. You're going to always be like this. He's a liar. From the beginning, he's a liar. And you need to take courage and say, I'm not going to walk in defeat any longer. I'm going to walk in the victory wherein Christ has set me free. And I won't be no longer tang entangled by the yoke of bondage. My mind now is going to be free to walk in the success of who God has made me. And so I have to understand God. God loves me. He cares about me. He wants the best for me. He wants the best for you. And so through this, continue to speak. The other day I was going through a very rough patch. And I was talking to someone that I wanted to sort of sympathize with me you know empathize with me and and, and I, I wanted them to feel sorry a little bit and at least say you know boy you just did and just stroked me and then uh, and um and they said to me all right now um now you've done play all this pity party thing when are you gonna brush yourself and get up and i felt that was so insensitive because i had expected you my good friend to be there and, and, and the brother to, to, to say to me, yes, man, you've done well and, and stroke me a little bit. But now you're telling me, get up, brush this thing off and, and start moving. And he said, the reason I have to say this to you, because you've not been here. This is not the first time you've been here. When you fall down many times and got upon yourself, when you've been through worse situations than this and rebounded and recovered, and I've seen you recover, and I've seen you when I thought you never would have gotten up, you got up, and I've seen you recover. Don't tell me that the fighter ain't in you. I know he is. And so wherever this thing is that's causing you to, to, to second guess what you have, I'm here to say, listen, lion, come out of the lamb. And I'm not going to patty cake you. And when you finish, all of a sudden, I felt rejuvenated first I was hurt but I eventually I came to realize that listen sometimes what you need is a good stroking to say get up and walk you are more than capable of walking in victory everybody ain't gonna pat you on the back can I say it again even when you do well everybody ain't gonna pat you David encouraged himself in the Lord 
You got to know how to encourage yourself and say, boy, I did good. And if nobody else sees it, I know I did good. And that's not arrogance. That's the confidence that God has given to you be based on the fact that you've served your God well. And so when you serve him, be able to say, Lord, I thank you that I can boast in the fact that I have served you honorably and let the God of heaven keep you and sustain you under the pressure. And so, watch this. Gideon says to them, listen, 30, 22,000, you go. I thought if it was me, I would have got discouraged. He took the 10, and then God said, 9,700, you go. So now he's down to 300. 300 out of 32,000. Woo! How would you have felt? Yeah. Could you imagine that? How would you have felt? When I did the calculation, and I'm not a good... King mathematician, but what I what I got from that was that was less than one percent. Because one percent would have been from thirty two thousand, one percent, if my maths are right, would have been three hundred and twenty. So three hundred would be somewhere around about zero point nine or something like that. A little under one percent. God did a miracle. And mash up the human coquilocalized. Mash up a mighty army with 300 men. How did he do it? God said, when I finish this time, you'll never brag and say you did it. What I'm about to do in your life this time. You won't be able to say you did it, and I'm going to fix it in such a way that even if you say you did it, those around you would know you're lying because only God could have done what just happened for you. I'm here to tell you that God is about to change your circumstances in such a way that you won't be able to take the credit. Only God will be able to benefit from what is about to happen in your life. Can you receive that right now? God's about to turn some stuff around that's going to be mind-blowing and only miracle making god's about to do some stuff for you that's going to change the very trajectory of your life i'm not saying that to be over deep and spiritual i'm saying it because it is so god is getting ready to do miracles in the midst of his servants and he says i'll bring it down to 0 0.9 three seven five percent Less than 1%. And I'm going to win with that. So you know that when I order a thing, I'll make it good. That when I purpose the thing, I'll make it come to pass. When I destine a thing, that the devil in hell can't stop it. I'm here to tell you, God's about to work on your behalf. You've been on the backside waiting for a while and you've been saying, God win. And I'm here to tell you, God said, now is your season. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. We're now in a building program and, and right in the middle of this building program, we went through this pandemic and we went through Dory and all these stuff. And I'll tell you something. I have just counted out 2020. And bless God, we've had some great gifts and persons who understand vision building, who understand uh, partnering, and they came alongside our vision, and, and an electrician, and he did work, and he began to do stuff in the pandemic that I did not anticipate or expect, but God showed him, touched his heart, and I pray a thousand blessings over him. And he came in and he blessed us and he began to work and put up the electrification to get it moving forward. And then a group came up, a team came, and they began to put up all of the rock sheet and stuff in a pandemic. Why are you saying this? Not boasting, I'm showing you that when you think you on the floor, and the count is on your life. God will say, no, you won't go to 10. I'll lift you up. 
and I will show you my glory. Why? Because we couldn't take credit for it. It is the doing of the Lord. God will show himself strong to you as you continue to love him, as you continue to trust him, as you continue to put your confidence in him. One of the things that, that I learned in this passage that blessed my heart was this. And he said this, and the Lord, verse 4 says, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will try them for there. Watch this. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And whomever, whomsoever I say unto thee, They shall not go, then this shall go. And there was this now. God says, you're now at 10,000. He said, bring them down to the water. They said, I tell you, go in, you take them. They said, I say, no, don't go. When he divided that, 9,700 was not allowed to go. 300 went with him. Watch this. So he brought them down under the water and watch this. And he did what the Lord said. And let's go to verse 6. And the number of them that lapped, putting them in a hand there with, uh, to their mouth, were 300 men. God did a miracle with 300 men. And this is, verse 8 says, verse 7 says, And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the 300 men that lapped will I save you. God said, By this small number, I'm going to show my glory. By this 300 man, I'm about to do miracles for you. I'm here to tell you, by the little bit you making, God says, I'm about to do wonders. By the little bit you, you seem to have, God says, I'm going to do wonders with what you're doing. If you can trust me, one of my deacons, were allowed to preach. I um, minister the word last week, and uh, he did a demonstration, and he was talking about, in essence, the God of Mammon and the true God, and he was talking about how we put greater trust in our resources than we do in God. And he did a demonstration where he, he actually lit some real money. But it was not by any means to impress people because who burns money? But he did it as an act to say, my confidence is no longer going to be in this currency, but it's going to be in the true and living God. I watched people as they came and they brought and they lit their monies. Now you would say, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy for the people who's trusting in mammon. But for those who said, today I put God back on the throne, I put God back on the throne. Today I denounce mammon as the God of my life, the wealth and greed. And today I put God back. And so if God say, give it up, I'll give it up. If God say, kill it, I'll hold it. Why? Because today God's looking for some people who can put their trust in him and not in resources. Because COVID got us thinking more about stuff. Some of us don't tithe no more because we, our confidence is in stuff. When your confidence is in God, I'm not going to beat the tithe issue. I'm making the point. When things were good, you were still giving. You can't hold back because you're afraid. Your faith has to penetrate your fears and say, if I've got to give half based on what I get, I'm going to trust God because Paul said, not that I desire a gift, but that fruit may bound to your account. I'm here to tell you, don't let fear win. Trust God through the process. Don't sound like the heathen. You know the goodness of God. You know what he's done for you. You know how he's brought you through. You know that the, the law of, of reciprocity works. And the law of sowing and reaping works. You know you've been in the kingdom too long to start doubting God now. 
Trust him. And watch him turn it around for you. Let me show this as we wind this down. And watch what he says. And he says this. And this is the part, bless my heart. He says, And so the people took the victuals, verse 8, in their hand and their trumpets. And he sent all the rest of Israel, every man, unto his tent and retained those 300 men. And the host of the Midianites was beneath him in the valley. That's where they were, beneath him. They're beneath him. They're beneath him. I want you to save the devil. The devil, the enemy is beneath me. That's where he is. But this is, watch this now. And he says this. And it came to pass the same night, verse 9, that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into thine hand. God says, now that Gideon has obeyed, God says, now go down. I've given you the host. Victory is you. All you've got to do is move on a word. If God said it, that settles it. And so he says, go down. I've given you the host. Verse 10. But if thou fail to go down. Watch this. Go thou with Fura thy servant down to the host. Verse 11. And thou shalt hear what they say. And afterwards shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. I want to stop right there. Did you know what he just said? He's talking now to the 300. He's talking to Gideon. And he says, listen, if there's any more fear in any of you, I want you to go to Pharaoh. Because Pharaoh is about to say something. He's about to bring you to something and give you a dream that is manifested. That's going to strengthen you. Every now and then when fear tries to grip us, we've got to remember what God said. And so when he went down, if you read further, you'll discover that he said how he saw a dream. And the interpretation was that God had given them the victory. They came out and said, let's go now. Because he said, listen, if you're still scared, I need you to go down and go to the host with Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's going to take you that there's a servant who's going to tell you something he saw and in that vision he saw the victory of Gideon's army and so I want you to know see because every now and then because you look so disadvantaged it appears as if the, 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 the devil's side seems much mightier than your side but you didn't understand you didn't understand that there's an unseen mighty warrior on your side and his name is Jesus there is a mighty warrior that is working inside of you he's called the Holy Ghost and there's a father who has endorsed what you are about to do so I'm here to tell you they're more with you than with them walk in the victory that you know and understand that though it looks difficult though it looks misty hazy and foggy God is on your side working behind the scenes for your victory don't give up don't quit don't lose heart. The best is ahead of you. I came to encourage you today that tomorrow is your best day. If you only believe all things are possible to them who believe. I'm here to encourage you today. Don't lose heart because of how things look. Look through the eyes of faith. He has given you eyes of faith that says he will bring you through. Speak to your spirit and command your soul to line up in a line. Speak to your emotion. Speak to your word. Speak to your thoughts. Speak to your mind and begin to walk in the courage that you know you have in Christ Jesus. He had to overcome. Listen, Gideon won the battle because he obeyed God. He told the army, follow me. When I slap, you clap. When I shout, you shout. Listen to me and follow what I say and watch what's going to happen. I'm here to tell you, if you follow what God says, you're going to get the victory. 300 is about to beat countless thousands. Why? Because God is on your side. Whatever it looks like, you're about to have victory. You're about to have victory. Hear me. 
Victory is your portion. Your name is victory. Success is your middle name. So walk in the victory. Walk in the strength. Walk in the power that you have in Christ Jesus. Understand your God. That he's not in the business of trying to destroy you. He's not in the business of trying to bring you to shame. But this God that we serve is in the business of trying to make you the success that you are destined to be because you are his child. God bless you today. Amen and amen. So friends, today I just thank God for you. Thank you for sharing, for coming in. I want you to share this. Let them know that we love you, that every Sunday morning you can count on us. There are some other things that we're planning to do that's going to be um, soul stirring and motivating for you as the weeks progress. And I'm telling you, it's going to be life changing as we de delve into some topics that's going to be critical for your development and growth. And so we, we bless God for you today. We want to encourage you. I just wanted to, to just to remind you that no matter how life circumstances look in the natural don't i don't care how it looks for you now yes you don't but bishop sanders i ain't got nothing working for me i don't care you're not counting out all it takes is a thought from god to change your circumstances so don't worry don't fret maximize your faith let faith come alive in you and watch what god's about to do father today i pray for strength. I pray for victory in the hearts of the discouraged, the downtrodden, and the dis I pray today that you would enlarge their territories, help them to know that you haven't forgotten them. Lord, it's so easy to feel alone when we can't trace you. But let our faith leap. Let the words resonate in our hearts to remind us that you are faithful, that promise. And so, God, today I pray blessings upon the hearers today. I pray for those who do not know you as Lord and Master, whom to know is life eternal. I pray, God, that a heart that is pliable and ready for the word, the entrance of your word, will now come. Touch them, convict them, help them to trust you and to see the manifestations of your grace. May God's favor be your portion. God bless you, my friends and my family. Until next time. You are destined to win. God bless you. Wow, what a word today. We have truly been enlightened and have a better understanding of how our God works for us, through us, and with us to accomplish His plans. We've been working hard behind the scenes to bring Kingdom at Home back to you. So if you were blessed by this message, please share it with your family and friends so they too can get a better understanding of how God works. Remember, you can also worship with us in person at the sanctuary on 3B East Atlantic Drive every Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. Safety protocols are enforced, so don't forget your mask. Today, we are excited to announce the relaunch of our women's ministry, Kingdom Women, scheduled for Wednesday evenings at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom. The meeting info is displayed now. Make sure you tell all the ladies you know that they want to be a part of this life-changing opportunity. Just as a reminder, corporate prayer is still on for Tuesday mornings at 5.30 a.m. And Kingdom Roundtable continues going strong on Thursday evenings at 6.30 p.m. Both via Zoom online. The meeting IDs remain the same and are on the screen. A family that prays together stays together. And we're so proud of your participation. Find out more and get up to the minute notices right on your phone by joining our mobile broadcast list. Get on it now. Text your name and the words connect me to 242-727-8999. The number's below. We're looking forward to having you all log on. This recording and other resources are available on all of our social media pages. Stay connected at Kingdom Worship Center International on Facebook and KWCI 242 on YouTube. 
like, follow, subscribe, and share. Let's get the word of God out to the whole world. I can't say goodbye without thanking you for your continued financial support of this ministry. Your contributions help us to help others. If you're new to Kingdom Worship Center and you would like to learn more about how you can partner with us financially, we have updated our online banking information and it is on the screen. You can also text or call us at our mobile number for more details. Once again, thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay home, and we pray the peace of God be with you now and always. Be blessed. We love you.